Hi everyone. So this is, I'm guessing it's part two of the Owen hand generator. I don't know of, of how many work parts. It seems like every time I do one of these Owen hand generator uh, videos, it seems to get bigger and bigger and bigger as we go on. But in the meantime, what I have here is a, as you can see here, um, I have my own an generator parts manual for my BFA 4.0 gen set, as you can see there. This is the fuel system page, and you can see here my carburetor, and of course the, uh, the gasket, and the intake manifold, and the fuel line, and all that good stuff that goes along with it, and the almost impossible to find choke. So what I have here is I have my carburetor off of the system, and I do have the choke. I, I just took it off. It's in another location, safe. And so, as you can see here, that's the operation of my choke. But in the meantime, what I'm doing now is trying to confirm some parts numbers because, you know, I'm looking at this uh, carburetor. Now I'm going to put that over here on the parts diagram. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit because I'm going to show you the actual... I'm going to try to zoom in without getting too crazy with it. Hopefully this thing... I don't know if this will actually zoom in properly and do a nice job of it or what. But what I have here is it says 1600, 6100 and it has 146 underneath it. Now it says 146 dash and then I have 0410 here and then I have some other numbers 25 dash 001 and then a 56 down in the corner. Um, but what I'm looking at is the 146 dash 6100 that seems to be a standard number on the size of the side of this thing and this is not going to do macro which I tried to see if I could get it to do macro but it's not really doing a great job with it so again I'm going to try to zoom in and see if it'll do if you can see that from from there down here it says 6100 okay so you go here I'm going to go on to Amazon Amazon and again we have a 146 6100 this is the carburetor replacement kit, the rebuild kit, and it's one of two. It has the floats, which I like, has the gasket, has the carburetor gasket, a couple O-rings. It's got the little hinge pin for the floats. It's got a couple of the replacement bolts, some O-rings, and the, uh, the needle valve that goes into the jet. So I look at that and I go, oh, okay, that's cool, because that pretty much looks like what I've got here. For this, I mean, it fits it. There's that triangular end. There's that there, and I and I've noticed from other videos that that that's the case. So then I go and I'm looking at this, going, okay. Well, I'm gonna again. I'm gonna look at my cart real quick, and I'm gonna look at this other kit that's there. Don't know if you can see any of this from the screen because this is like horrible for uh, video. There we go. I'm going to do that there. So I'm going to click on the second one. I'll put links in the description. This one here shows, again, I'm going to blow it. Oh, come on, let's get down. There we go. I'm going to blow it up. I'm going to blow it up. Fuel filter, some fuel line, some zip ties, which I have no idea why they're zip ties. I guess they're for the fuel lines. Uh, some more O-rings, some um, intake manifold gaskets, which are really cool. There's this one here and this one here, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, more needle valves, um, two of them, and along with the needle valve, the um, the actual cover, uh, that little shiny domed cover that goes over to seal it off. And what I really like is the fact that there's a couple extra springs, O-rings, and then there's the float valve tool which is basically how to measure your float valve because if your float valve is not balanced correctly is not adjusted correctly you could run super rich or super lean all the time doesn't matter what your idle valve and your 
air your air fuel mixture valve is it doesn't matter you're always going to have problems I'm suspecting that this carburetor has issues with the float va the floats and we're going to find that out when we start crack this open and get into it and uh, really just find out what is going on because there's something going on it's running super rich doesn't matter where I adjust the valves um, the needle valves and I've looked at the needle valves they do not look damaged at all and so I'm just kind of you know a little frustrated that I just can't get to where I need to be with this and I'm gonna put uh, links to the uh, part numbers I mean again it's really hard to read on the video I do apologize but I'm gonna put part numbers up for everything that you see here and be able to um, give people a little heads up on how to rebuild the uh, 4.0 BFA uh, Onan Gen set carburetor. It's a single barrel. It's uh, you know again mo it's, for the most part it's not in super it's not in really bad shape. It's a Nick Nicky. It's a Nick, I'm gonna say Nikkei, but it's probably Nikkei. Uh, made in Japan carburetor. Pretty standard for these. That's where the um, fuel line comes in over here. The the fuel line comes in over here. The idle valve is here. Don't know. It's re really hard to see here in the diagram. As I zoom in to the diagram, but that is the. I'm going to take a pencil here. So that's the um, supposed to be the fuel mixture. Again, the uh, the fuel line comes in behind the carburetor. They don't show this in this diagram. And uh, so again, the the replacement kit gives you two of these, two of these valve, two of these um, gaskets. It gives you this gasket up here. It apparently gives you the O-rings and and the actual gasket that runs around the top of the carb and around here, the section here, along with the needle valves. But it doesn't give you the <laughs> the idle control needle valve, but that's fine. We got that probably get that on another kit. So all told, I'm going to be into it for about 38 bucks with shipping. Um, to get these two kits. I'm going to get the two kits, then I'm going to break this apart. I'm not going to break it apart until I get the kits. And we're going to see how compatible all these parts are because we're going to do a side-to-side -side comparison of each of the parts uh, as I get them out of the package and as I take them out of the carburetor. Okay? So stay tuned. I've got here the uh, diagram for carburetor parts from the Onan manual and I just wanted to make it uh, I'm going to zoom in here a little bit just want to get here and hopefully that'll be fairly clear but I want to let people know that okay we've got the this is number seven okay number seven is known as the idle speed adjusting screw so that that is if you're looking at the front of the Onan generator okay I'm going to zoom back a little bit that is a screw that is down here below to the side. So if you've got the governor and it's basically the throttle controller, <laughs> this is the throttle. Yes, the governor rods on this, but you know what? It's the throttle, okay? The idle mixture screw is here. The idle speed adjusting screw is there, okay? Here's your choke up front. It has that round, you know, the, uh, the coil with the, uh, the round housing on it for the, for the choke itself goes back and forth what we've got in the back or what I call the back around the back side is I'll turn this here like this what we have here on this section here is what they call the power needle package and I don't have that in here right yet I took it out I've got it cleaned off and that goes in here. That controls your, your basically your air fuel mixture and the amount of fuel that goes into the carburetor itself. So that's going to control quite a bit going in there. So you've got that going on there. And with the rebuild kit, you get basically the float and you get under item four, you get a valve 
screw and seat package that's another one of these needle valves with a jet you can see this there's a jet here I'm doing this in pencil and there's a jet here under number six which is the power jet okay then you get number four which is labeled as just a valve and seat package but there's another looks to be another you know it's a seat but it's a jet there as well with a needle valve on it so what we're going to be doing with the rebuild is we're going to be basically checking the jet that's inside here and I've light I've uh, loosened this up so I can get in here so this is the uh, power jet basically that's in there and I don't know if you can see it I'm going to try to zoom in and try to do it with some light here oh, a little bit so we're going to get in there So the jet is right inside there and when I read it it has a uh, there's a number associated at 153 in there 0.53 and so that's the original jet that's inside there so we're going to be doing is taking this apart as mentioned and uh, following this going through this parts diagram which is of a great help having the original manual here I mean it basically spells out every single part including the little screws that go on the plates the throttle plates which is pretty cool um, that's the choke plate that's the choke right there, open, closed. And on the bottom is the throttle, basically. Plate, open, closed. And so that's why I'm saying that this, you know, they call this the governor. It's really, um, that's, that's just another fancy word for the throttle on there. Okay, so here we are. I'm back again. Um, I've what I've done with the carb is I've actually taken the carburetor apart and in preparation of showing this section of the video uh, I wanted to make it a little easier on me to try to like disassemble it to kind of show you what's going on here so as you can see here there's ooh, there's the uh, parts diagram for the uh, I've got a couple copies of it floating around my little worksheet here um, I've got the gaskets here which I've made patterns for but I'm probably gonna just wind up buying them they're like three bucks and actually the rebuild kits actually come with these that I'm ordering so that's cool so what we've got here is we've got basically the adapter on top of the carburetor this ring this is the uh, what's called the let's find that part there this is for the the rebreather here that comes through there's like a rubber hose that comes up through injects warm air into the manifold here um, this is actually for clamping down the air filter, the air intake on top of the carburetor, but it also acts as a bracket to hold on to the choke, which is I have removed here. Used to be the choke used to be there, and I still have it because I don't think you can get get it anymore, uh, even aftermarket. And I've saved the choke sign I'm gonna put that back on when I get this cleaned up and repainted got some cast aluminum uh, engine paint I'm gonna spray on this just to kind of clean it up so what I've got here is it takes either a really good uh, really large flat screwdriver or a um, socket to basically undo these and that's what holds that's the bracket that basically holds the, uh, the coil the choke coil electrically heated coil onto the carb so this is the actual choke plate itself as you can see here then I've got these these are uh, taken out by an allen key the allen key is a um, I believe it's a form it says a uh, CRV4 so this is the this is the smaller and wrench that takes out these so I'm going to pull those out magically 
and so this comes off and is put over there, right there. So now you're looking down into the carburetor itself. Now I've cleaned this already. I've gone through and I've really scrubbed it with carb cleaner and a brush and uh, gone to town on it. Then there's these four screws that hold on to the top section of the carburetor. There is a video for this uh, on YouTube. I will put a, post a link in the description to that particular uh, carb um, rebuild video. It's really good. It's about 15 minutes long, but it's excellent for this carburetor. So I'm not going to bother showing all that, but this is what happens <laughs> when you soak stuff in a carb cleaner. This uh, O-ring no longer really fits. It's very loose, but it's also cracked. So it's probably a good thing I'm getting this replaced. This is in bad shape. So that's gone. Now I had to take a, uh, a little mallet, rubber mallet, and tap this thing around because it was really tight onto, the, uh, onto it here. So I'm going to lift this off. Okay. Now before I, you know, before I lift this off, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say a few things. One, this here, this is where the governor rod goes on. This is basically the throttle linkage, okay? So that screw sets basically your maximum throttle that you can get on this. You can screw it down, you can screw it back, and it, and it allows it to, you know, it's they call it the idle screw uh, for all intents and purposes. Like if I look at the diagram, it's number two on the diagram, if you can even see that. And when you go to number two, it's called the idle it's called the idle needle package, which I wouldn't really call that a needle. That's just a screw that goes through here and basically stops. It acts as a stop. That's that's a little confusing. This one down here is this screw right here, and that's that is a needle valve to me because it does have it's number seven. And number seven is the idle speed adjusting screw. So this is the idle speed adjusting screw down here. And I'm going to just briefly use my other hand to remove it and show you what that looks like. So this supposedly adjusts the idle speed. So there's that one there. See that little, it's got a little pin prick kind of needle tip there. It's got a, it's got a spring on it. And so that goes into there. There is actually a jet inside the carburetor you'll, you'll see in a minute. Hopefully, if it's not too blindingly uh, blurry. And then this one back here, which they call number one. This one here, number one, is the power needle package. Now, this one here, that goes into that fitting there. I'm going to pull it back. Boy, that's the really long one. This one here, this after being in, in carb cleaner, this whole O-ring just swelled right up and it was split. That probably was not helping me at all as far as uh, trying to control the uh, adjustments on the carburetor. So I'm going to turn the carburetor a little bit more. There's another brass fitting here. That is for the fuel line, which is down here. I had to pay, take a pair of vice grips to get that part off. This whole fuel line's all bent obviously I had to you know take it out of the generator thing it's pre-bent obviously to fit the generator I bought another quarter inch I bought a, a CN 430 this is just nickel copper um, alloy it's one quarter this is almost exactly the length I need within an inch or two it's a little long not a big deal better than being too short and these nuts thread right into the brass fittings, which is great. I'm just going to replace this thing. This is original. It's probably kind of fried. I'm really not a big fan of um, if I can replace it easy enough, I'm going to do it. So I'm going to rebend that in shape. So now I've got here. So I'm going to lift off this. I've been, you know, I tapped it with the mallet a little bit. So there we go. There's that's what you got on the underside underneath there. Kind of space for the floats. I've cleaned this up a little bit. You can see a little corrosion on this side where stuff leaked in, in between the gasket here. Uh, enough to get to where the float hinge is. And I'll show you that hinge, the float pin. Um, so I've cleaned all this out with carb cleaner. I mean, I've really gone to town with it with carb cleaner. So I'm going to put that over there. I'm going to place it upright so I don't bend this. Then we get into the meat of it. There's the float right there 
There's the float hinge pin there. So let's see if I get a better angle of it. So there's that little hinge. Now you can lift this out in this one. So if, as you lift it out, that little needle valve drops in there. But there's the float. It's a little two two float twin float. And there's that pin. And then I have to like there's the jet right. There's one of the jets there. You can see the pins in there. So I'm going to dump the pin out. So there's the pin itself that goes goes into a little notched position here on the like that slips right in there. So that that acts as you accelerate and decelerate that helps regulate the carburetor. So I've blown all this stuff out. There's a jet there. That's where the power jet goes into. That's in there. And um, let's see. There's the fuel. So the fuel actually comes up through here controlled by the float and that needle valve. So that that's pretty cool. And then there's a main jet through there too as well. So I've cleaned all this out. This was full of rust. This had rust in the bottom of it. You could probably see a, just a little tinge of it on the one side here where it was hard for me to get it out. Um, especially around the jet. But I've pretty much scrubbed it all out. It's not 100% perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. And I cleaned all the orifices out, cleaned them. Scrubbed them down. I scrubbed the plate down with 1500 grit sandpaper on a flat surface. And so this is going to be ready for the rebuild kit once it uh, shows up. So I will show that on the next part.